Um, so if you pan down here at the standard six foot plastic table that you can get at Menards, um, I've overlaid it with just regular butcher paper and then traced out where everything goes. And you guys are gonna get a map of this as well um, to lay out over a six foot table. And uh, I've, of course I've labeled everything uh, where things need to go with little notes uh, and stuff. So in your script, you should have uh, the Bible story and within the Bible story uh, are the prompts and stuff for you to take certain objects and set them out um, in seemingly random order, but they all have to do with something in the story. Everything behind me, all of the items, the, the household items that you can find probably either around in the church or in your cabinets, um, all of them reinforce the story uh, until the very end when it's, when it's revealed. So I'm going to set these things out um, in the order that they go and show you some of them have to be angled in such a way, some of them have to be tilted in such a way, some things hold up other things. Uh, so I'm going to go through everything and show you how to do it. The first thing um, that you're going to sit down is shaving cream. It was a bit of a close shave. Um, then the Game of Life box. What I've done with this uh, is I've emptied the contents because you're just going to need the box lids. Um, so you're talking about when Jesus gave his life for us. So this is going to be face down right here. This is just going to set right here for a minute. It needs to be upright, but we're going to put something inside it to hold it upright later uh, in your script. Uh, the next thing was the candle. The candle goes right here. They hated Jesus with a burning passion. The next one is the half roll. Eh, it could be a full roll. It just needs to be unwrapped. Like it can't still, um, can't still be in the wrapping. After the paper towels, the next thing is to grab the Windex because Pilate could see clearly. There's no reason to put Jesus to death. What you want to do is stand this guy up and use that to hold it straight. Now for the mob. I've got these little Lego guys. You can use really anything here as long as it's small. Something's going to be set right in front of this. And when the light hits it, these guys are actually going to be hidden. You won't see their shadows. You'll just see this, uh, this bit here. So you want to set up all these little Lego guys right here. There you go. Now, uh, Pilate uh, interviews Jesus and tries to figure out um, if there's anything wrong with him legally, anything he's done legally, but he couldn't find anything. So he washes his hands of the whole deal. And you want to grab uh, this soap. This is actually lotion, uh, but anything shaped like this can set right there. And if you notice, it's not exactly perpendicular with the table, it's, it's at a bit of an angle. And that should be on your map. They took Jesus away. They didn't even give him anything to eat. Not even corn pops. And that goes right there. So you can already see, um, like it, it looks pretty random. Uh, and hopefully the kids aren't gonna figure it out uh, just by looking at it. It's gonna look Com completely random until at the very end when we shine the light on it, which is super cool. After they didn't give him anything to eat, um, we move to the actual crucifixion. And the way that you make the cross, simply with just two rulers with a rubber band, and then you fashion a bit of a cross out of that. It's kind of cool because it has a double meaning. What, um, what Jesus did on the cross was measured by his love for us. Then, you stick it in this guy. This is just a, um, like one of those uh, floral foam blocks. I think I got it at Walmart for like 23 cents or something. You stick that guy in there and then raise it up. Just like that. And you can see now the mob is hidden, right? You won't see any of the Lego guys. So any, any Figures that you pick need to be shorter than whatever foam block that you um, that you purchase. Then the guards took him away, uh, and they beat him, and eventually nailed him to the cross. For this, you use the hammer. You want a hammer that's um, a full size, not like a, a smaller tack hammer, or something that's going to be able to have enough weight on it to be able to stand on end. They didn't give Jesus anything to drink at all, uh, not even water. So we're going to set this guy right inside here. 
just for a second. This will be covered up as well by something we're going to add in a minute. So then in your script, uh, John, Jesus' friend, who was near the cross, probably wondered why Jesus didn't just call upon armies of angels to, to take care of these guys or to call on his Father in heaven to save him. Why, why didn't Jesus just wake up? So you can use any kind of mug you want. This is a Christmas mug. John didn't understand why Jesus wasn't, uh, wasn't doing anything about it. He didn't understand why Jesus wasn't um, calling on his Father for aid or for help. He was just taking it. Uh, and, and John didn't understand why. In fact, uh, he didn't understand a lot of what Jesus talked about while Jesus was here until after he was gone. And then it finally dawned on him. He thought that this was the final chapter in Jesus' life. Again, you can pick any book. This is actually a, a really good book. It's called Multipliers. I highly recommend it. So that guy stands right there on edge. Um, a book about that size, uh, thickness-wise... You know, don't, don't get like Stephen King, <laughs> um, but you can, I would keep it about that size. Um, after Jesus dies on the cross, they take down his body and they wrap him in cloth and put him in the tomb. This was originally one piece, um, and you can either pre-cut it if you want to, or take a pair of scissors and just cut it in half for the kids. And this guy goes right in there, like such. Now, um, you're going to talk a little bit about the empty tomb where Jesus was placed. So the next bit in your script, you talk with a shoebox with a lid that detaches. The one that I got is a Nike one, and it was like attached, so I had to cut it off, and it still works fine. Um, but you talk a little bit about the tomb that Jesus was in, but then when you reveal he's not in the tomb anymore and it's empty, this part fits. this guy inside of it to hold it up just like that and then you take the other end and you actually lean it on the hammer so after the disciples find out that the tomb is empty that Jesus is nowhere to be found that things are starting to settle in they all gather um, to eat in an upper room this one is the only tricky one, really. Um, these just have to balance on top of that. It might help to have a bigger um, roll. I think in your script it says a half roll. Um, but it's just something where you can set two pieces of silverware. I used a, a spoon and a knife. You can use a fork and a spoon. It doesn't matter. Just two pieces of silverware um, that will be able to balance on top of the hip tops. So while they were eating in the upper room, Jesus appears to them um, out of nowhere uh, and sits with them and speaks with them and, and uh, they're floored and flabbergasted and blessed and um, it's, it's an amazing time. And they realized that death really had no control over Jesus. This is hair gel <laughs> um, that you control your mane with. And then this guy... Like I said, this is the only kind of funky thing. Make sure that it is pointed up like this, not like that. It won't have the same effect. So you turn it just like that and then use the silverware to pinch it and then hold it up. So now that is all of the items now seemingly laid out in a, um, a random fashion. So the cool reveal uh, is with the lights off. So we're going to go ahead and turn the lights off, and then I'll show you. Okay, so we turned all the lights off. I've got my flashlight right here. Whoa. Um, and then uh, during the next part, you're going to walk around the table a little bit. Um, there might even be a time where you shine it down here and put the cross super big on the wall because you talk about what Easter means and what Jesus has done for us. But then the cool thing is that you are going to start somewhere over here like this. So on the wall, the shadow on the wall is completely muddled. But as you walk,
Jesus is alive. So hopefully that explains um, where everything is going to go uh, and how everything is going to work. Your script with all of the prompts should be pretty clear um, as far as what order things need to go in. Uh, and I would suggest that you set everything up and plan everything out. Because if you see the table is angled here, it's not exactly straight on with the wall. I had to put this one at a little bit of an angle to get it to appear on the wall where I needed to. So prior to your service time or prior to when you're getting together with the kids, set everything up and test it out. You can even tape the floor, um, if you spike the floor a little bit with uh, masking tape, um, not duct tape on carpet. Janitors hate duct tape on carpet. So if you put like masking tape or painter's tape just to mark the edges of where the table is gonna go in respect to the wall, um, then you'll have everything set up ahead of time. And you'll have practice it ahead of time too uh, to make sure everything works out. So. Hopefully, it's a big wow for you and your church. Thank you very much.